The Building Blocks of Matter The substance of the universe, from a grain of sand to a star, is called matter. Scientists define matter as anything that occupies space and has mass. An object's mass and its weight are related concepts, but they are not quite the same. An object's mass is the amount of matter contained within the object, and the object's mass is the same whether that object is on Earth or in the zero-gravity environment of outer space. An object's weight, on the other hand, is its mass as it is affected by the pull of gravity. An object of a certain mass weighs less on the Moon than it does on the Earth because the gravity of the Moon is less than the Earth. In other words, weight is variable and is influenced by gravity. Elements and Compounds All matter in the natural world is composed of one or more of the 92 fundamental substances called elements. An element is a pure substance that is distinguished from all other matter by the fact that it cannot be created or broken down by ordinary chemical means. While your body can assemble many of the chemical compounds needed for life from their constituent elements, it cannot make elements. Elements must come from the environment. A familiar example of an element that you must take in is calcium. Calcium is essential to the human body. It is absorbed and used for a number of processes, including strengthening bones. When you consume dairy products, your digestive system breaks down the food into components small enough to cross into the bloodstream. Among these is calcium, which, because it is an element, cannot be broken down any further. The element calcium in cheese, therefore, is the same as the calcium that forms your bones. Some other elements you might be familiar with are oxygen, sodium, and iron. These elements in the human body are shown here, beginning with the most abundant element, oxygen, followed by carbon, then hydrogen, and nitrogen. Each element's name can be replaced by one or two letter symbols. All the elements in your body are derived from the foods you eat and the air you breathe. In nature, elements rarely occur alone. Instead, they combine to form compounds. A compound is a substance composed of two or more elements joined by chemical bonds. For example, the compound glucose is an important body fuel. It is always composed of the same three elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Moreover, the elements that make up any given compound always occur in the same relative amounts. In glucose, there are always six carbon and six oxygen units for every 12 hydrogen units. Atoms and subatomic particles. An atom is the smallest quantity of an element that retains the unique properties of that element. In other words, an atom of hydrogen is a unit of hydrogen, the smallest amount of hydrogen that can exist. Atomic Structure and Energy Atoms are made up of even smaller subatomic particles, three types of which are important. The proton, the neutron, and the electron. The number of protons in the nucleus of the atom determine the element's identity. The number of negatively charged electrons equals the number of protons. An electron has about one two thousandth the mass of a proton or neutron. There are two models that help one to imagine the structure of an atom. Let's look at helium. In the planetary model, Helium's two electrons are shown, circling the nucleus in a fixed orbit depicted as a ring. Although this model is helpful in visualizing atomic structure, in reality, electrons do not travel in fixed orbits, but whiz around the nucleus erratically in a so-called electron cloud. In the electron cloud model, the electrons of carbon are shown in a variety of locations 
as they would exist at different distances from the nucleus over time. In atoms, protons and electrons carry electrical charges. Protons with their positive charge are designated as P+. Electrons have a negative charge and they are designated as E-. In atoms, neutrons have no charge. They are electrically neutral, just as a magnet sticks to a steel refrigerator because their opposite charges attract, the positively charged protons attach to the negatively charged electrons. This mutual attraction gives the atom some structural stability. The attraction by the positively charged nucleus helps keep the electrons from straying far. The number of protons and electrons within the neutral atom are equal. Thus, an atom's overall charge is balanced. Atomic number and mass number. An atom of carbon is unique to carbon. What gives an element its distinctive properties? What makes carbon so different from sodium or iron? The answer is the unique quantity of protons each contains. Carbon, by definition, is an element whose atoms contain six protons. No other element has exactly six protons in its atoms. Moreover, all atoms of carbon, whether found in your liver or a lump of coal, contain six protons. Thus, the atomic number, which is the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom, identifies the element. Because an atom usually has the same number of electrons as protons, the atomic number identifies the usual number of electrons as well. In their most common form, many elements also contain the same number of neutrons as protons. The most common form of carbon, for example, has six neutrons as well as six protons for a total of 12 subatomic particles in its nucleus. An element's mass number is the sum of the number of protons and neutrons in its nucleus. So the most common form of carbon's mass number is 12. Electrons have so little mass that they do not appreciably contribute to the mass of an atom. Carbon is relatively light. Uranium, in contrast, has a mass number of 238 and is referred to as a heavy metal. Its atomic number is 92. It has 92 protons, but it contains 146 neutrons. Uranium has the most mass of all naturally occurring elements. The periodic table of elements is a chart identifying the 92 elements found in nature, as well as several larger, unstable elements discovered experimentally. The elements are arranged in order of their atomic number, with hydrogen and helium at the top of the table, and the more massive elements below. The periodic table is a useful device because for each element it identifies the chemical symbol, the atomic number, and the mass number, while organizing elements according to their propensity to react with other elements. The number of protons and electrons in an element are equal. The number of protons and neutrons may be equal for some elements, but are not equal for all of them. Isotopes. Although each element has a unique number of protons, it can exist as different isotopes. An isotope is one of the different forms of an element, distinguished from one another by different numbers of neutrons. The standard isotope of carbon is carbon-12. Carbon-12 has six protons and six neutrons for a mass number of 12. All of the isotopes of carbon have the same number of protons. Therefore, carbon-13 has seven neutrons and carbon-14 has eight neutrons. Hydrogen has three common isotopes, protium, deuterium, and tritium. An isotope that contains more than the usual number of neutrons is referred to as a heavy isotope. An example is carbon-14. 
Heavy isotopes tend to be unstable, and unstable isotopes are radioactive. A radioactive isotope is an isotope whose nucleus readily decays, giving off subatomic particles and electromagnetic energy. Different radioactive isotopes, also called radioisotopes, differ in their half-life. Half-life is the time it takes for one half of any size sample of an isotope to decay. For example, the half-life of tritium is about 12 years, indicating that it takes 12 years for half of the tritium nuclei in a sample to decay. Excessive exposure to radioactive isotopes can damage human cells and even cause cancer and birth defects. But when exposure is controlled, some radioactive isotopes can be useful in medicine. The behavior of electrons. In the human body, atoms do not exist as independent entities. Rather, they are constantly reacting with one another to form more complex structures and to break down more complex substances. To fully understand anatomy and physiology, it is important to grasp how atoms participate in such reactions. The key is understanding the behavior of electrons. Although electrons do not follow rigid orbits a set distance away from the atomic nucleus, they do tend to stay within certain regions of space called shells. An electron shell is a layer of electrons that encircle the nucleus at a distinct energy level. The atoms of the element found in the human body have from one to five electron shells, and all electron shells hold eight electrons, except for the first shell, which can only hold two. The configuration of electron shells is the same for all atoms. The precise number of shells depends on the number of electrons in the atom. Hydrogen and helium have just one or two electrons, respectively. If you take a look at the periodic table of elements, you will notice that hydrogen and helium are placed alone on either sides of the top row. These are the only elements that have just one electron shell. A second electron shell is necessary to hold electrons in all elements larger than hydrogen and helium. Lithium, whose atomic number is three, has three electrons. Two of these fill the first electron shell, and the third spills over into the second shell. The second shell can accommodate as many as eight electrons. Carbon, with its six electrons, entirely fills its first shell, and half fills its second. With ten electrons, neon entirely fills its two electron shells. A look at the periodic table reveals that all of the elements in the second row, from lithium to neon, have just two electron shells. Atoms with more than 10 electrons require more than two shells. These elements occupy the third and subsequent rows of the periodic table. The factor that most strongly governs the tendency of an atom to participate in chemical reactions is the number of electrons in its valence shell. A valence shell is an atom's outermost electron shell. If the valence shell is full, the atom is stable, meaning its electrons are unlikely to be pulled away from the nucleus by the electrical charge of another atom. If the valence shell is not full, the atom is considered reactive, meaning that it will tend to react with other atoms in ways that make the valence shell full. Consider hydrogen, with its one electron only half filling its valence shell. The single electron is likely to be drawn into relationships with the atoms of other elements, so that hydrogen's single valence shell can be stabilized. All atoms, except hydrogen and helium with their single electron shells, are most stable when there are exactly eight electrons in their valence shell. This principle is referred to as the octet rule. 
and it states that the atom will give up or gain or share electrons with another atom, so that it ends up with eight electrons in its own valence shell. For example, oxygen, with its six electrons in its valence shell, is likely to react with other atoms in a way that results in the addition of two electrons to oxygen's valence shell, bringing the number to eight. When two hydrogen atoms each share their single electron with oxygen, covalent bonds are formed, resulting in a molecule of water. In nature, atoms of one element tend to join with atoms of another element in characteristic ways. For example, carbon commonly fills its shell by linking up with four atoms of hydrogen. In doing so, the two elements form the simplest organic molecule, methane, which is also the most abundant and stable carbon-containing compound on Earth. Another example is water. Oxygen needs two electrons to fill its valence shell. It commonly reacts with two atoms of hydrogen, forming water. Incidentally, the name hydrogen reflects its contribution to water. Hydro meaning water, and gen meaning maker or generator. Thus, hydrogen means the water maker. Thank you for watching.